Welcome biologists to this video where we're going to explain the content that is most likely going to come up in your exams. There's some stuff that hasn't been on for ages but also some stuff that usually comes up every academic year. So the, the stuff that comes up every academic year is in this first box. The other boxes I've broken it down into each exam um, to help you figure out what is coming up on each paper. This stuff in this box comes up every academic year. So you are probably most likely gonna get a question asking you to identify the type of immunity, so if it's passive, active, natural, or artificial. You will also definitely get a question asking you to identify the genus or species of an organism, usually from the binomial naming system, but also how to correctly write that binomial name. In maths-wise, you will always get percentage changes in the exam. Now, sometimes it asks you to calculate percentage changes, getting numbers from tables or graphs. Um, you will always get a multiple, multiple choice question asking you to identify which statistical test you use in a different situation. So, for example, you need to know when you would apply the chi-squared or the Spearman's rank or the t-test. You need to know when you would apply each different statistical test in a different situation. You will always get at least one statistic on the paper um, the, each year and the one that hasn't been on for a while is the t-test. It could be paired or unpaired. Unpaired is more common than the paired t-test and some academic years they do give you two statistics in one academic year so you can't afford to rule the other ones out even though the t-test is due this year. More and more common on the exam, we have surface area form ratio of cubes and cuboids and spheres. So make sure you get practice in calculating that for those different shapes. I do think this year they're going to ask you to draw a graph. Uh, they could be really horrible and give you a histogram to, to draw. Or they could give you a line or a bar chart. Um, you do need to be familiar with each one of these graphs and how to draw them. Um, and you also need to be able to um, identify errors from these graphs, but also be familiar with drawing on the standard deviation bars as and when appropriate. Skill-wise, you will always get a question asking you to evaluate a conclusion or a claim, and there is a separate video on this, which I'll link underneath. And in this evaluating a conclusion, you have to use data usually from the graph or the table or the information provided in the question. Normally, you are asked to draw a, a diagram um, however, this year I think they might give you a diagram and ask you to identify errors within that. And then I've mentioned the graph just up here. Now, the rest of it that flows in here, none of this is concrete. These are just stuff that hasn't been on for a while. Um, so please take this with a pinch of salt. You can't afford to leave anything out in your revision. Please make sure you revise every bit of content. But this stuff hasn't been on for a while. So this uh, module two, which is due in all papers, um, which the first bit is cell structure. Um, so in cell structure, things that haven't been on or for a while are the images produced from a light or a TEM microscope. And that could be of organelles or it could be of different structures in cells or different um, tissues. Um, also, we have um, eukaryotes versus prokaryotes, so similarities and differences within their structure and the function of different parts of the cells. Um, hydrogen bonding in water from biological molecules hasn't been on for a while now, so drawing that, also drawing hydrogen bonding between water and other molecules as well, and also the role of water within living organisms. Now, you usually get at least one biological molecule each year, although I think you might get water, I think you might get one of the other ones as well, which could be a protein, carb, or a lipid. Now, you might get asked about them, but also you'll ask about, get asked about the um, techniques to test for each of these biological molecules. And also thin layer chromatography, which um, hasn't been asked for for a while. You might get RF values in there as well with that. Now, thin layer chromatography links in here to biological molecules, but also links into photosynthesis to do with the photosynthetic pigments as well. So it's fairly common, uh, that one as well. In terms of nucleic acids, they haven't asked about ADP and ATP for a while in terms of their structure and the use of ATP. Semi-concerted replication of DNA, uh, backing that up with Messelson and Stahl's experiment hasn't been on for a while. And also transcription and translation in, in terms of the synthesis of polypeptides. A really nice six marker here would be to compare the process of semi-concerted replication and protein synthesis. In terms of enzymes, it's academic year. The mechanism of enzyme action hasn't been on for a while, so the lock and key and induced fit and the theory behind that. 
Um, and then they could link that into several different practicals to include the enzyme concentration and substrate concentration in particular. So familiarising yourselves with some of those different experiments would be very beneficial. They also haven't asked about coenzymes and cofactors for a while and they might link questions here about coenzymes into respiration and photosynthesis as well. Um, and also inhibitors of, of um, enzyme controlled reactions. And again, they could link inhibitors of enzymes in other contexts. For example, um, what happened? What would happen if you had a, a competitive inhibitor of acetylcholine esterase that you find working in the synapse? So be prepared to um, explain the impact of these things across the spec. In terms of cell division, um, I think they're going to go slightly heavier on the stem cells this time around. This one hasn't been on for a while now. So stem cell cells including how do we get erythrocytes and neutrophils, what's the role of those different um, blood, blood um, cells, where do I find them and how are they made. But equally the plant version in terms of the xylem and the phloem coming from that merry stem cells in the vascular cambium. Where do I find that tissue? What does it look like? But also, how does it create those different vessels? But also, they really like asking about stem cells in research with this. This is where you can get like an evaluate a conclusion or evaluate some kind of a method, how to improve a method. They might throw anything at you with this. Most likely to do with data and interpreting data with spec point M. As for papers one and three, in exchange surfaces, this is the first place where we meet this need for a specialised exchange surface area. You meet this in exchange surfaces, transporting animals and also exchange surfaces, um, sorry, transporting plants. And it's really, really common. This is where your surface areas form ratio calculations all come in here. In terms of the lungs, I think they, what hasn't been on for a while is the structure and function of the different components in the lungs. Um, so, for example, how, how much of the cartilage, the smooth muscle elastic fibres, ciliated epithelial cell um, and the smooth epithelial cell or squamous epithelial cells and smooth muscle would you get in each of the different components within the lungs? They also haven't asked about ventilation of gas uh, in fish and insects. I'd probably recap how to do a dissection with those as well. Um, and also recap what a microscope image looks like of the fish, of the insects, and also of the different tissues in the lungs as well. And again, they could link that into, is this a TEM, an SEM, or a light microscope image? And you need to tell us how. In terms of transport in animals, We've got the need for a transport system. Um, again, the surface area's volume ratio calculations. We've got different types of circulation systems, so that's open, closed, double and single. And we've also got the structure of the mammalian heart, including dissections as well. Um, we've got the cardiac cycle that hasn't been on for a while and I think the graph might come up. This graph is the one where it has the left side of the heart where it's got atrial systole, ventricular systole and diastole on the graph and it's represented by the aorta, the uh, left and right, uh, sorry, the left ventricle and the left atria. Um, ECGs haven't been on for ages. Make sure that you can identify the different anomalies that could arise in ECGs and what they would look like. And then the boar effects, which hasn't been on for ages. Now, they could be really horrible here and give you an animal you've never heard of and ask you to explain why that looks, um, explain the theory behind it based upon the boar effects of that curve shifting to the right. We've got, again, the need for a transport system with a surface area form and racial calculations. And again, the xylem and the phloem. What's the arrangement of that vascular bundle within a stem, a leaf and a root? And again, they could link that into microscopes, what microscopes take in a certain image. Um, and also they could link that into the structure of the xylem and the phloem as well. Hydrophytes haven't been on for a while and also translocation, which again, they could probably link that into experiments as well. In terms of module five content, communication homeostasis, I haven't asked about cell signaling for a while, which could link into any kind of hormone, but also membrane structure as well. In terms of excretion, um, the liver hasn't been on for a while with the process of detoxification and also the ornithine cycle. In the kidney, they haven't asked about ultrafiltration and selective reabsorption for ages, but also they haven't looked at the how excretory products are used in medical diagnosis. So that's the pregnancy test. Really nice one here. They could um, adapt that pregnancy test theory to how a COVID test has worked. So they might throw something like that at you. 
In terms of neurons, they haven't asked about generation transmission of nerve impulses. So that's resting potential, action potential, and how they work. Um, they could link that into membrane structure as well. And they haven't asked about the structure on role of synapses uh, for a while as well. So they could again link this into um, enzymes action here and inhibitors. And they could link it into poisons or drugs as well as a bit of a suggest question. In terms of hormones, they've not asked about adrenal glands for ages um, and what is made from each part of the adrenal gland and the role of those hormones. They've not asked about blood glucose concentration for a while including the pancreas. Um, make sure you're familiar with microscope images of the pancreas and how uh, blood glucose is controlled and diabetes as well. Um, again, autoimmune diseases, they might link back to stem cells as well um, in their treatments. Uh, in terms of plant animal responses, um, any of the plant hormones could come up. They're fairly common and including... Um, in, in mammals, how nerves and hormones impact together on the heart rate, which could again link into this part here on hormones to do with the adrenal gland as well. So well worth making those links. In terms of muscles, um, I don't think there'll be loads on muscles, but you never know. I think you need to familiarise yourself with the microscope images, but also the diagram form of the contracted and the relaxed muscle here. Um, so I think they might give you stained sections of the different muscles, so make sure you're familiar with what a skeletal, cardiac and smooth muscle looks like. In terms of photosynthesis, I think they might throw practicals at you here, um, factors that affect photosynthesis and um, how to make up one of those experiments, but also analyse data from one. In terms of respiration, I think this one may come up, for what, it's may come up this year, it's not been on for a while. Look at aerobic respiration, all of the spec points G to H, and also anaerobic respiration. And again, make sure you're familiar with all the practicals here, including how all of these things can impact upon the rate of, of respiration. In terms of papers two and three with communicable diseases, we've got those pathogens causing disease, which is the one that comes up every year. Primary defenses haven't been on for ages. Um, the mode and action of phagocytes, phagocytosis, make sure you're familiar with the microscope image here. Um, I think the graph on the primary and secondary immune response might come up, so make sure you're able to uh, explain each part of that graph and also what the antibodies are like. Again, they might link this structure and function of antibodies back into how polypeptides are formed through transcription and translation. They might also link it into the ultrastructure of a plasma cell uh, which makes these antibodies. Ultrastructure is the components and organelles inside that enable it to make that protein. And then we've got autoimmune diseases, which they might link into stem cells again. In terms of biodiversity, we need to make sure we know how biodiversity can be measured at different levels. So that's the species level, so the number of species, the variety of species through Simpsons and Nix. Um, you also need to know the variety of genes, which is measured through polymorphic gene loci, and the different number of habitats as well. So definitely make sure you know your definitions of species richness and evenness. They really like that. I think polymorphic gene loci is coming up this year, so how genetic biodiversity can be assessed. That's not been asked for ages. And also the sites, CSS and CPD, hasn't been asked for for a long time. In terms of classification evolution, that binomial naming system comes up every year. Stuff that hasn't been on for ages is the five kingdoms and three domains, comparing those two, but also what is, um, what is each kingdom, what its features. We also need to know about the relationship between classification and evolution and the different types of adaptations which are anatomical, physiological or behavioural and also natural selection. Again, not being on for ages, make sure you can describe that um, theory. In terms of module 6, patterns of inheritance, how do we get variation within our species? Links to epistasis um, and linkage um, hasn't been on for ages. Hardy Weinberg hasn't been on for ages. And speciation and artificial selection haven't been on for ages. Now, speciation, they could link that back into natural selection, which, again, hasn't been on for a while. In terms of manipulating genomes, uh, they haven't asked about Sanger or chain terminator technique for a while, uh, or um, links to high throughput sequencing, which is just a faster way to do it, and electrophoresis as well. They haven't mentioned um, genetic engineering for a while, and also gene therapy, which, again, they could link into stem cells. In terms of cloning, somatic cell nuclear transfer has not been on for a while and the uses of microorganisms in biotech 
including advantages and disadvantages. They haven't asked about batch and continuous processes for ages. And they haven't also asked about the standard growth curve of microorganisms in a closed culture. In terms of ecosystems, carbon cycle hasn't been on for a while. And then in populations, we've got uh, the significance of limiting factors in the carrying capacity, sustainability with fishing, and also management of resources. In terms of what else could come up on your exam, um, we have skills, so identifying and, and designing a method. Just remember the dependent variable, independent variable, control variables and statistics and repeats so dicks for that one um, calculating different volumes of a solution to get different concentrations and then in terms of the maths would you i am that's not been on for ages rf q10 that's enzymes percentage error on uncertainty hasn't been on for ages and i mentioned polymorphic gene loci but anything could come up so please don't just focus on this content and I've just taken some wild guesses here about some of those six markers so you can have a go at practicing some of the answers to some of those so guys good luck with your exams don't don't forget do not use the words at the amount of size try and use as much terminology as you possibly can to get as many marks as you can and good luck